Hi, this is a quick recording just to um, help you guys out with some of the um, the rules we're doing um, in the um, the rules of quantum mechanics. This is going to be rule four, um, the outcome probability rule. Uh, the basic idea is this: um, we're going to ask. Um, so this I guess rule four. Basic idea is this: um, if we have an SGX, um, let's say. And then we follow it with an SGZ. The question is, um, what uh, is the probability that the thing that's coming out of here um, will then come out of here? Um, now, a couple of things we know from the um, from the previous rule, from the collapse rule, we know that whenever we measure something to be an SGX plus, so we know that um, we're coming out of this, we're coming out of the SGX plus channel. Whenever we measure it to come out of the SGX plus channel, it is a plus. Oh, it is a plus X. Um, it is a plus, plus X quanton. Um, so what the uh, the outcome probability rule says is that. We can first measure something called the outcome, uh, the, the quantum amplitude. All right, so this is the quantum amplitude. Now it turns out we calculate the quantum amplitude of things a lot, um, but weirdly, you actually can't measure the quantum amplitude, but we won't get too into that. Um, but so the quantum amplitude just says that if we're, we have a plus X coming into the SGZ, and we want to know whether it's going to come out of the minus Z channel, we set up a series of vectors that looks like this, where we start, we actually read from right to left, we read it kind of backwards from, from kind of the normal US way of reading things. We read it backwards, we start at the right, we say, well, we want it to be a minus Z, and we started with a plus X. And this is the quantum amplitude. All right, um, if you remember, uh, you can look up the vectors of these things, they're on page 108. Um, so the Z one is zero one, but remember whenever we multiply them these way, the thing, whenever the arrow points to the left, we actually turn this thing on its side, all right? Um, so instead of going up and down, the plus X one is just square root of one half, square root of one half. Okay, and so when we multiply this together again, I want you to remember that this multiplies there, this multiplies there, and so, and we just add them together. So we should get zero times square root of one half plus one times square root of one half. All right, and that obviously just gives us zero plus square root of one half, which is just a square root of one half, all right? Okay, so that's the quantum amplitude. All right. Um, of course, what we wanted was a probability of it coming out of the minus z side. It turns out that the probability of it coming out of the minus z side is just equal to the quantum amplitude absolute value squared. All right, so in this case, um, the quantum amplitude was square root of 1 half. And so if we take the, the, take the absolute value that's squared, it's just square root of one half times square root of one half, that just gives us one half. So we see that there's a one half probability that the thing coming out as a plus X comes out of the minus Z. And again, we, we, um, we saw that before, we've actually done this, uh, we've, we've done this in the previous chapter, and so it matches what we got before. So this is that probability. Um, if you wanna try this uh, quickly, go ahead and try it with the minus X and the minus Z, or the minus X and the plus Z, or the plus X and the plus Z, um, all of them should actually give you one half if you do them correctly, uh, because we know whenever we measure things that are in different um, orientations, so an X going to a Z, uh, an X going to a Y, et cetera, et cetera, we should always get one half. All right, so that's rule four um, of, the, uh, of the rules of quantum mechanics.